Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fourth day of Dreamforce. Today, we are going to be talking about data access best practices for Apex, Visual Force, and Lightning. My name is Betsy Thomas, and I'm an associate product security engineer here at Salesforce. Uh, I work on uh, reviewing applications for our app exchange and also some internal applications. And the other half of my time is spent on tooling and automation. Before I move forward, I would like my co-presenter to present himself. Hello, everyone. My name is Krishna. I am a part of Enterprise Security Team, and my role is Associate Enterprise Security Engineer. So my work mainly involves vendor security and also a part of uh, App Exchange reviews. OK, before we move forward, you all have seen this slide a lot of times. But uh, this, this slide, the gist of this slide is that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please do not make any purchasing decisions based on what we uh, speak today or what you see in our presentation. As such, we are not going to talk about anything which you have already not seen in our public documentations. Uh, the agenda for today is to go over some basic security principles and the Salesforce platform, and then to do a deep dive into crowd FLS and sharing. So let's get started. So let's talk about security and the Salesforce platform. You as developers have a lot of flexibility with respect to the Salesforce platform. You can extend the platform in order to uh, meet your business needs. But with this great flexibility, you can also introduce a lot of security risks, which you do not intend to in your code. And today, we're going to talk about how and why this happens and how you can avoid it with respect to data access. So let's go over two basic concepts. First is the concept of uh, privilege of least, uh, uh, principle of least privilege. So this is nothing but you should not be giving a user access to uh, or permissions to anything more than they require to perform the task. So if a user gets more than required access, then there is always a possibility that they will abuse it and they will escalate their privilege. So with respect to the Salesforce platform, you want to restrict the user uh, with respect to your code, just as the admin restricts their user base. The second concept is uh, context. Salesforce platform has two different contexts, uh, which you need to understand. One is the user context and one is the system context. The user context is nothing but it's defined by the administrator of the organization. So it is defined by user roles, permissions, field level security, sharing uh, rules, and all these things, which an admin defines. But system context is something which ignores all these admin defined uh, the, uh, all these uh, admin defined permissions, and it runs the user in under elevated privileges. So th this can be your Apex code, say. So you as developers use Apex code, and uh, that will run under system context in most cases. So before we move on, let me just introduce uh, three concepts of CRUD, FLS, and sharing. For those of who you uh, who don't know. CRUD is nothing but uh, create, read, update, and delete. And imagine your entire Salesforce org as a spreadsheet. And on the bottom, you see contacts, accounts, opportunities, leads. These are nothing but objects. And access to these objects is defined by CRUD. FLS is nothing but uh, is nothing but field level security and it defines access to the fields in your objects sharing is nothing but something which defines access to the records within your object so for example if you wanted to give access to row 5 and 6 then you would define sharing rules in your organization with this i want to pass on to uh, i want to talk about the application that we would be using today for demoing this, uh, uh, these vulnerabilities and how to fix them. It's called the Zip4 application. As you can see, we are logged in as a Zip4 user on the top. And what this application can do is search for accounts. 
So as you see, it, we searched for a string and it showed a bunch of accounts. A user has access to a certain number of accounts. So let's check out one of the accounts that the user has access to. And you see there are multiple fields that the user has access to. But the one field that the user does not have access to is the annual revenue field. So we are going to search for annual and the word revenue, and you would see that we don't have access. The user is not supposed to have access to annual revenue, and this is defined by the admin. Also, if you notice, the user does not have access to opportunities. With this, I would like to pass on to Krishna, who would talk about CRUD and FLS. Thank you, Betsy. So uh, CRUD or FLS is kind of an important section because this is the most commonly found vulnerability on App Exchange. So as you know, CRUD, uh, let's, let's define what CRUD is first. So CRUD defines uh, object level permissions on the org, right? So it's create, read, update, or delete. And as the image on the right, so, uh, right shows, so this particular user, for the accounts object, he has access to read, edit, or delete the objects, but he doesn't have access to create the object. And for the campaigns object, he has read and create permissions on the object, but he doesn't have edit or delete permissions. So that's how object permissions are defined by your admin on, in your org, right? So um, it's always good to think about CRUD and FLS, all, uh, it's always good to think about uh, user context and system context all the time. So CRUD, uh, Apex always runs in the system context. So CRUD is not enforced by default. But uh, Visual Force pages, they run in the user context. So CRUD is enforced by default. Uh, and there are some caveats to this, which I'll talk about in the later sections. And Lightning, uh, even though this is a client-side JavaScript, uh, even though it runs in the uh, it runs on the it runs in the user context. Uh, CRUD is still not enforced because it's a client-side JavaScript and it doesn't have access to uh, the Salesforce S objects or it doesn't have knowledge about the Salesforce S object and their permissions. And coming to field-level security, uh, so you'll have objects and you'll have multiple fields in the object, right? So each field uh, permissions can be defined through the field-level security. And so if you see the image on the right here, so there are multiple fields uh, here, and the user has uh, access to all the fields here. But if you see the annual revenue field, that is not checked. So this is what is defined by your admin here. And so he doesn't have access to the uh, annual revenue field. And this is, this is particularly the permission set of the zip4 user, which we are going to demo. So FLS for developers, again, uh, it's always uh, good to think about the user context and the system context. As I have mentioned previously, Apex always runs uh, in the system context. So it has access to everything. So, it, uh, so FLS is not enforced by default. And on the Visual Force pages, um, FLS is enforced by default. But the caveats that I have mentioned previously are these. So if you see the first line here, account.annualRevenue, account is a Salesforce S object. So it's a S object reference, so FLS is enforced by default. But if you see the second line, W revenue is a custom wrapper object reference that I have created for myself. So the field which I'm uh, referencing here, FLS is not enforced. Now, you might be wondering what a wrapper object reference is. A wrapper is a special class that you can create on Salesforce uh, around a specific S object. So if you see the first line here, random sensitive object, so this is a Salesforce S object. And the second line, W random sense to wrapper, this is a custom wrapper object that I have created. And now if I assign a sense to field from my Salesforce S object to, the, uh, to a field in the wrapper object, and if I reference this in my Visual Force page, then FLS is not enforced. And if you, if you have any questions about the wrapper object, I encourage you to look into the uh, developer uh, trail or uh, the developer.salesforce.com uh, website. So let's see how CRUD or FLS vulnerability demo can affect you. As, as Betsy, Betsy has shown previously, we have the Zip4 user. And we created Zip4 DF17 Visual Force page. I'll go to the Accounts page here. And I will open the United Oil and Gas UK uh, account. And I'll search for annual revenue. We have seen previously that this user doesn't have access to the annual revenue field. And he also doesn't have access to a bunch of objects. Now I'll search for Accounts. UNI, and you can see that I can access the annual revenue fields, I can access the opportunities, and I also can access the amounts. Now, your admin didn't intend for this user to see these fields or see these objects, but I can still access it through the Apex. So that's the vulnerability here. Now, uh, how do you enforce CRUD? 
It is very simple. In your code, all you have to do is before your DML queries, you have to use these methods, createable, accessible, updatable, and deletable. And below is the code snippet, example code snippet that you can uh, reference for future references. And, and enforcing CRUD in Visual Force. Visual Force runs in the user context. So it's obviously uh, enforced by default. But the caveats that I've mentioned, right? So if you are using wrapper object references, uh, FLS uh, CRUD is not enforced by default. During those scenarios, uh, I encourage you to use um, uh, enforce CRUD on the Apex side. And enforcing CRUD in Lightning. So Lightning is custom JavaScript that you are writing on the client side, and it doesn't have knowledge about the Salesforce as objects or their object permissions. So you have to make sure that you are enforcing CRUD or FLS on the um, Apex side. So enforcing FLS again is very similar here. So you have uh, the custom methods that we have defined for you. All you have to do is use these before your uh, DML queries. And Enforcing FLS in Visual Force, I, I want you to look at the bottom two lines here. So if you see the first line in green, that is a Salesforce S object. So uh, FLS is respected here. But if you see the second line, uh, it's a wrapper object reference again in your Visual Force page. So FLS is not respected. So this is what we look for uh, when, we are reviewing the, um, when we are reviewing your managed package. And Lightning, again, you have to make sure that you enforce this in the, uh, on the Apex side. Let's see how I can fix the CRUD or FLS demo. So I have shown you that this user has access to uh, the data that he's not authorized to access. So this is the Visual Force page we have created. And that is the Zip4 controller class that is being referenced in this Visual Force page. So in this class, uh, we did not implement any of the CRUD or FLS. So I'm scrolling you down to show you that we did not implement any CRUD FLS. But we also created another class. Zip4 controller CRUD FLS fix, uh, which has CRUD or FLS enforced. So if you see here, CRUD is enforced on the account object, and CRUD is enforced on the opportunity object, and then FLS is enforced on the annual revenue field. So I'll go, I'll copy this um, class uh, name, and I'll reference it in the Visual Force page. Now I'll save it, and then I'll go to my Salesforce instance, and I'll search for my, I'll refresh the page, obviously, to make the changes. Uh, and then I'll search for my account, and you can see that annual revenue field or opportunity objects or the, their associated fields are not visible to me. So that's how you have to fix CRUD or FLS vulnerability in your, uh, in your org. So, so to summarize CRUD or FLS, uh, Salesforce as a platform has given so much power to developers. So it's, so it's your uh, uh, responsibility to use your discre discretionary, discretionary powers and make sure that um, you use the system and user context uh, wherever possible, and then enforce CRUD or FLS. Now I'll hand over to Betsy to continue on sharing. Thank you, Krishna. So sharing, what is sharing? As we have spoken about before, sharing is nothing but access to records in your Data, in your database, in your objects. If there is one thing that you take away is that uh, your Apex code runs on a system context. So remember that. And an admin can enforce several uh, if sharing in several ways. But what do you do on your code? So as I mentioned, Apex runs on a system context, and that means it's not going to respect any of the sharing permissions which are defined by the admin. Visual Force and Lightning uh, just depends on the underlying Apex controller to enforce sharing. So you have to enforce this in the, share, in, in the Apex controller. So let, let's look at our demo app and see how it violates sharing. So this is, we have logged into our user. Let's go and look at what accounts the user has access to. And if you see here, the user has access to two accounts. So now let's go and search for accounts in our demo application. And you would see that the user has access to several more accounts with with respect to our application. This is because the underlying code did not enforce sharing. 
So how do you enforce sharing in Apex? All you have to do is write the with sharing keyword in your class definition. That's all you have to do. So then the next obvious question is, what if you do not write with sharing? Or what if you do not write without sharing? How does it work? So if you are, as, as I mentioned before, if you're calling from Visual Force or a Lightning component, it is not going to enforce sharing. But if you're calling from a class which enforces sharing, which has with sharing keyword in its class definition, then it is going to respect that and continue forward for that call. So let's go back to our demo and fix the issue that we had and see what happens. So Krishna used this controller. And we're going to go and look at this controller and see that it does not implement with sharing. Now we, we copy this controller into another, uh, into another class. And then let's call it zip for controller secure. And you see that it implements with sharing. Let's go back to our Visual Force page and use this controller. And then we can go back to our application. and search again, and you would see that the user has access to the only two accounts which they are supposed to. So as I mentioned before, the best practices for sharing is to explicitly define with or without sharing. But in case you define without sharing, please document exactly why you have uh, you have written, uh, you have defined the class at without sharing, because that Using without sharing is, means that you're overriding the controls put by the administrator. You can refer to all these links. The, this should be available after Dreamforce. Uh, these slides should be available after Dreamforce, but you can take a picture. The first one is our trailhead, which also talks about CRUD and FLS. Also, go and check out these talks after our talk. These are also given by security folks. It talks about lightning and scanning. Uh, so, And as always, if you have questions, we are going to be available uh, after this talk in the security booth in the developer area. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you.